I'm not going to beat around the bush here. Gateway Arch should not be a national park. I'm not going to wait to give you my thoughts or try and soften the blow with some sort of but it's complicated answer because it's not complicated. Straight up, Gateway Arch should not be a national park. Now, let me also say this. I'm not one of those people who likes to hate on other national parks and try and like rank the worst ones and compare them all against each other so I can write a listicle about it. In general, I love all national parks and the beauty of them to me is that they protect the full diversity of the most spectacular natural places in America. To compare them is impossible. Like, I live right down the road from Congaree National Park, which is consistently ranked as one of the worst national parks in America. But how can you compare a place like Congaree to a place like the Grand Canyon? You can't. Of course you can't. If you go to Congaree expecting to see the Grand Canyon, you're going to be disappointed because that's not what Congaree is. But if you go there expecting to see one of the largest remaining examples of an ecosystem that used to dominate the southeastern United States, or see some of the tallest trees of their species anywhere in the world, you're going to have a great time. This is, to me, the reason I don't like to rank parks like that or engage in the whole worst parks thing, because they're all special and unique and different and worth visiting in their own way. But Gateway Arch? Nah. It doesn't meet any of the criteria or significance for how we establish national parks here in America, and thus, for me, falls outside of that whole thing that I just talked about. It should not carry the designation, and yet it does. And there's a reason it does, and I'm going to tell you about it right now. All right, I've gotten several comments about this, and I think it's about time I finally answer this question. If you have any questions you'd like answered, let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you like national park stories that are fun and educational like this one, make sure to subscribe and maybe even hit the bell thing so YouTube reminds you that I actually exist. Uh, and if you're feeling really generous, then you can check out my Patreon over at patreon.com slash national park diaries, where you can get like three extra videos a month and join my discard and help me keep making these videos. Your support is truly appreciated. Now, I want to clarify here that I'm not arguing that Gateway Arch shouldn't be part of the national park system as a whole. It definitely should only that it shouldn't carry the official national park designation. If you need a refresher on all the different types of national park designations, check out my video on them, link in the description. Rather, I would argue it should carry a designation more befitting of what it actually protects and represents, as it did for more than 80 years. They always have to make these things so complicated. Yes, up until 2018, Gateway Arch National Park was known as the Jefferson National Expansion Memorial, and it did just that. It memorialized. It was originally established by FDR in 1935, both as a memorial to Thomas Jefferson, because he didn't have one yet at that time, and to commemorate westward expansion in the United States, because St. Louis was the place that Lewis and Clark left from on their expedition in 1804. That's why it was a memorial, because it was commemorating these things, as memorials are supposed to do. See, again, my designations video. Now, the arch wasn't even here at this time in 1935. It wasn't completed until 1965, designed by a Finnish-American architect named Eero Saarinen. He actually died before the arch was completed, but like, the arch didn't change anything as far as what this park was for, like what it was protecting. It was still a commemorative memorial style park to westward expansion and Thomas Jefferson. It just had a fancy new 360 foot tall stainless steel arch now. The gateway arch for the gateway to the west. But over time, for obvious reasons, the gateway arch became an iconic part of St. Louis's identity. Like, when you think of St. Louis, the first thing that pops into your mind is probably the Gateway Arch. And when it comes to visiting this park, people didn't go, I'm going to visit the Jefferson National Expansion Memorial. They said, I'm going to visit the Gateway Arch. It was just iconic and visually distinct and, frankly, easier to say. But the Gateway Arch being an attraction in and of itself, regardless of the historical elements it protected, ended up kind of posing a challenge for the leaders and citizens of St. Louis. Because people were just driving in, 
taking a picture with the arch and driving out. It was a drive-through destination, basically. The leaders of St. Louis didn't like this, obviously, because that meant those visitors weren't spending money in St. Louis. Like, their most famous tourist attraction wasn't generating any tourist revenue. They weren't staying in hotels, or eating at local restaurants, or shopping at local businesses, or going to see a local baseball game. Visiting the Arch didn't give them a reason to stick around and spend money in the St. Louis economy. In fact, visitation to the Arch was even on the decline. Visitation went down every year from 2012 to 2018. So a partnership of local boosters undertake this massive overhaul of the park grounds. Not the arch, it stayed the same, just the grounds and the museum below the arch. Like they spent $380 million to redo the whole park basically, including $220 million of private money. They redeveloped the whole place to get people to stick around more and integrate it with the city as a whole. Not least of which was updating the museum exhibits to reflect the more complicated history of westward expansion. The whole rah-rah manifest destiny thing wasn't really cutting it anymore. They also capped the interstate which divided the park with a nice wide pedestrian plaza to connect the arch area with the old courthouse area. Because who would have thought that railroading freeways through your city was a barrier to pedestrian movement? Anyway, again, the idea here was to connect the park and the arch with the city so that it might drive more economic traffic and not just vehicle traffic. Somewhere along the way though, somebody was like, you know what else drives economic development and brings in tourism dollars? National parks. While we're at it with all this redevelopment stuff, why don't we change the name of this place to Gateway Arch National Park. Now, to change the name of a national park, you gotta go through Congress, but the Missouri Congressional Delegation, which was bipartisan, was more than happy to go along. And so in February 2018, the Jefferson National Expansion Memorial became Gateway Arch National Park. And their plan worked. In the last full year, it was a national memorial, 2017, the park attracted a shade under 1.4 million visitors. But in 2018, the year it was redesignated, more than two people, more than two people, of course, more than two people, more than two million people went to visit. We're gonna have to wait on the economic figures, but it certainly seems like the name change is having its intended effect. Now, this isn't a new thing. Especially recently, we're seeing a lot of NPS units being redesignated to national parks in the name of economic development and tourism dollars. We've seen it with Pinnacles in 2013, Indiana Dunes in 2019, and New River Gorge in 2021. You can make arguments against each of these, like the Park Service did itself with Pinnacles, but at the very least, these parks are thousands of acres and protect natural resources. Gateway Arch is 91 acres and is smack dab in the middle of downtown St. Louis. This is not the type of park deserving of national park status. Those other designations exist for a reason. They determine what a park protects and how to protect it. That's why Yellowstone is a national park and Gettysburg is a national military park. That's why Cape Cod is a national seashore and why the San Antonio missions are a national historical park. That's why the Appalachian Trail is a national scenic trail and why the Blue Ridge Parkway is a national parkway. It's also why the Gateway Arch used to be a national memorial. Different designations for different resources. I mean, even the National Park Service itself agrees here. Let me read you this quote from then acting Deputy Director Robert Vogel at a Senate subcommittee hearing in regards to the renaming of Gateway Arch. He said, quote, Although we would welcome using the term Gateway Arch in the name of Jefferson National Expansion Memorial, the National Park Service strives to provide consistency in the naming of park units. To better align with the standard nomenclature for units of the National Park System, we recommend that Congress redesignate the unit as Gateway Arch National Monument. National parks contain a variety of resources and encompass large land or water areas to help provide adequate protection of the resources. The existing 59 designated national parks, remember this was 2017, protect at a minimum thousands of acres each and some span millions of acres. At only 91 federal acres, we believe that the Jefferson National Expansion Memorial is too small and limited in the range of resources the site protects and interprets to be called a national park. Since it is a site similar to the Statue of Liberty National Monument, 
in its iconic status and small land area, we believe that a more fitting name for the Jefferson National Expansion Memorial would be Gateway Arch National Monument. So there you have it from the Park Service itself. Using the Gateway Arch in the name is fine and probably long overdue, to be honest. But it's too small and it doesn't protect the types of resources associated with national parks. They recommended a national monument designation or, you know, the designation it used to have, National Memorial. But I can hear you asking, what's the big deal? I mean, is this just a bunch of park nerds arguing over semantics for something that doesn't really matter? Well, no. There are pretty big implications here for the future of national parks and how they're managed and protected. For one, this dilutes the title of national park. These places are considered the crown jewels of the entire national park system. They protect the most scenic and beautiful and important natural places in the United States. That designation means something. It carries a lot of weight and history and significance. By adding a park like Gateway Arch, which, while easily deserving of inclusion in the system overall, weakens the title of national park by diminishing the criteria we set aside for our most treasured landscapes. But that's not all. Giving Gateway Arch the title of national park sets a precedent that any park, regardless of its worthiness, can be co-opted in the name of politics and economic development and tourism dollars. It opens the door to the highest bidder to come in and say, I want to be a national park, throw some money at their congressman, and poof, there you go. It effectively replaces the intrinsic natural value of these parks with an economic and political one, and reduces their significance from that of the national to that of the local. That's not conducive to protecting these parks for future generations to enjoy. I know this doesn't seem like that big of a deal, that I'm making a mountain out of a molehill. It's a name change for crying out loud. But I think this matters. National parks are special places, the most special. They not only preserve these places in perpetuity for future generations to enjoy, but they uphold some of our most sacred values and beliefs. They're America's best idea. A park like Gateway Arch diminishes that idea, and that worries me. I would love to know what you think, though. Should Gateway Arch be a national park? Let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell thing and follow me on Instagram and check out my Patreon. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.